This program is brought to you by Emory University. So there actually is a whole conversation already going on amongst people about how would you know when a robot was at the point that it had enough of a sense of itself and its independent existence that it deserved some kind of rights. Um, and it is not unconnected, by the way, to the great ape debate. This is all part which, where they're trying to suggest that maybe gorillas and chimpanzees and some of the great apes also deserve certain levels of rights um, because they seem to have most of the qualities that we think you know, they suffer, they project into the future, they love their children, things like that. Um, it will be an interesting question, and, and it won't just be an intellectual question, because one of the fascinating things about robots is there's been a whole series of experiments that show that if you create a robot that moves, um, but just looks like a whole bunch of gears, and you give someone a sledgehammer and say, smash it, they'll smash it. If you put a little furry cover on it, so now it moves, but it looks organic, or it looks more organic, they won't hit it. And so as soon as you begin to make robotic forms look more like organic forms, whether you make them humanoid, um, whether you make them more animal um, appearing, people are very, very reluctant to um, harm them. So we already have robots that in one sense or another are being treated like animals not like robots, right? Because really there's no reason not to smash a robot, I mean, except for the expense of it. Um, it's no different than smashing your toaster, right? Nobody would say, oh, it's wrong to smash your toaster. And yet, as soon as you begin to give the appearance of, um, of some sort of life to robots, people begin to project onto it the feelings that they project onto life. So as robots get more and more sophisticated, as they look more and more humanoid, emotionally, we're going to begin to want to treat them more like human beings. And that's why the question is so difficult. Because there is the question of when do they deserve it, divorced from our emotional reaction to them? When do they actually reach the point of having an internal life, for example? Um, and that, we don't really know the answer to that, because I know that I have an, I know that you have an internal life or that anyone watching this has an internal life because I have one and I'm a human being and you're a human being so I assume you have one too. But when you start from scratch to try to create a thinking creature, the moment when that creature has an internal life versus can answer all your questions in such a way that a person with an internal life does, and is there a difference between those two things? Um, is a very, very difficult question and one that people who think about these, whether they're philosophers or roboticists, we just don't know the answer to that yet. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.